Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, in today's video I thought I would show the process for adjusting a background and uh, this painting is actually part of a class demonstration that I did and I actually had two of the same paintings drawn up and ready to go and I started uh, with uh, the uh, background on one of them uh, painted and so then I could start painting on the flower and on the other one I think I had uh, the flower masked and we started uh, the painting with uh, by painting the background in. So having both uh, paintings allowed me to uh, work back and forth and show the class and give the class a lot of information. So this uh, next image is the uh, painting that I completed so uh, it has a little bit of a different look than uh, the current painting. It's a little uh, cooler pink and uh, some of the background uh, marks are not necessarily the same. And this one is a little more finished. So for this painting, because it is so similar to the other one, I wanted to uh, make a change to it so that it would um, be something that could be in my portfolio and not be so similar to the first one. And I also thought this would be a good uh, painting to uh, show how to change a background with a glaze of color. And you can see from my photo that uh, the background on the original image is a lot darker than what I have in the photograph. So as I was working on the flower last night and it's not quite done, and I was considering options on, on how I wanted to uh, work with this uh, particular uh, demo painting, I decided that I would go ahead and uh, put a glaze of color over the background and darken it. So this is uh, something that uh, it doesn't have to be dramatic everywhere. You don't necessarily have to put color over the whole thing. You can just um, place color. You could place water in here and then just place color in portions of it. I haven't quite decided how I want to do it yet, but I do know that I will be um, painting the background darker with a glaze. And so what I will do is uh, clean off my palette, get out uh, the colors I will be using, and then I will be back. I have started getting out color, so I have decided to, at least right now, I have uh, my idea is to use ultramarine deep that I have on my palette uh, by Holbein and it's very similar to French ultramarine um, so I will use that and then I'm pulling out some quinacridone magenta and this is a Daniel Smith and the reason I mention the names is because different brands the pigments can be slightly different I used to have uh, two uh, olive greens on my palette because they were different enough from the different brands that one was slightly more muted and one was a little more vibrant. And for a while I had them both on my palette. And I'm not quite sure if I, which way I want to go with this color just yet. So I'm getting a lot of both out. I may only use a little bit of the magenta or I may use a lot of it. And my bigger brush is loaded up with some of the ultramarine deep on it so I just decided to use a second brush to get some of the magenta out. Now I may decide to get out my tubes of paint and just squeeze some tubes or some tubes, some color out onto some pigment out onto my palette uh, if, if I need to but I'll try this first and see if I feel like I have enough paint. And I have done this kind of thing in the past. I've probably 
done this to maybe, well, hard to say exactly how many paintings, but I can think of paintings that I have actually had framed all uh, in their frame and some that it had even gone to shows. And then uh, when I look at them again, I've decided that some part of the painting needs to have a glaze of color over it. So doing a glaze of color is a way that you can push some part of the painting back. Um, you can make part of the painting uh, more dramatic because you're using uh, stronger values or it may uh, mute some part of the painting so that something else stands out more. So because this painting has lots of little pieces and little fiddly things that I'm going to have to go around, one of my uh, options or thoughts is that I need to rotate it and actually start this way and come this direction. So as I'm doing this, I need to make sure that I'm keeping the leading line where my paint and my water is. I need to make sure that that's staying moist. Um, so I can start with water on here. And then if I decide some part of this, maybe I don't want to completely lose all of that. Um, and I won't worry about doing anything in here until I get uh, this bigger section done. And if I accidentally go over an edge, it is best just to leave it. And then once it's dry, I can come back and lift uh, that glaze color off of there just a little bit. So the way I'm looking at this is I will uh, try this. If it works, I'll be um hopefully it will be good and I'll be happy with it. Um, and I also figure I have already done this painting and the painting uh, had sold. And so this is sort of just a bonus to have uh, this one to play with. And let's see. Okay, so I am liking that purple color. And what I want, I don't actually want it to be purple. So uh, because it's going over the green, let me see if I have a green swatch over here and it won't be maybe the exact color. So this is very similar to what I've got down and I can test my color on it. I could go a little redder possibly and the red is going to be a little more muted then. I don't know that I want it too red. I think I'd rather keep it more on the purple side. And um, because I want it to be a little muted, I might put a touch of uh, Quinn Burnt Scarlet in it, or maybe I will go even more dramatic and put a little bit of indigo with it. So I'll pull a little bit of indigo out. And indigo is a near black. It is a cooler, cooler, uh, dark gray black pigment. And it's a, it will be a little more muted. So let's see. I don't know if that's going to do quite what I want, but I will test it. It's not bad. It will be cooler back there, which would be good. And I think I'm, I'm just going to go with that. So I also find with indigo that it doesn't, even though it feels really dark on the palette, that it doesn't really go as dark as I would think it would be from pulling it out on my palette and in the uh, dried state, it feels a lot darker than it actually is. So I don't necessarily want a lot of indigo in the mix. just enough to kind of mute my colors. The other thing that I could possibly do if I wanted to take the time is I could uh, lay tape down over uh, my flower and the leaves and the stems and then cut around it like I have shown in some of my other videos and, and mask those main um, pieces again. And um, the problem, one thing with that is if you put mask masking tape over a painted area, 
you have to be very careful to really press around the edges because uh, that little bit of paint that's on the surface can cause um, a little bit of a, a gap between the paper and the uh, tape and actually you can get color seeping under it. So it can work and I have uh, seen others use it and I've used it uh, to basically protect an area that you've already painted. But um, I think I'm going to just do this a little looser today and, and not do that. All right, so I'm making a big pool. I want to have a lot of color and hopefully I will have enough color to get around this whole area. And then I'm going to grab some of the um, indigo in that mix. And this is what I have ended up with. Kind of a muted, almost navy. Um, I might put just a touch more of my rose or my magenta in there. And maybe a little, maybe all of that indigo. I'm trying to get it dark enough, but this is going to be a thin wash. So I'm not trying to go really uh, dark with the wash itself. And I could do this a second time if I needed to. Hopefully um, I can get this done with one pass. Anywhere that there are little thin areas, I'm going to use my smaller brush to apply some water. So I will start up here and I'm using little pressure. I don't necessarily want to cause the first layer in the background to move and change a lot. So I want to just sort of skim the water over the surface and I want my brush loaded with water when I come over here. So I'm not drying it and I will have to go back up to that area that I've already, that I started at. And I'm trying, I did go over the edge there just a second ago. Um, like I said earlier though, if some paint gets on some part of the flower or the stems, I will leave it and then I can come back later and lift it off if need be. This is such a thin area in here. I think I will not go all the way over with the water. I will probably with the paint. And the other thing that the water that I'm putting on will help with, if I get part of this with color, either uh, if I need to stop because it's starting to dry or uh, because I need to place water down here, I could just pause and only do one part of this and then come back later and add some water and finish. If I need more paint, any of that, putting water on helps me with that. Okay, and then I have a flat brush and this is going to help me place water on, but it is also a little rougher. So I have to be careful that I'm not scrubbing at the paper with it. And it won't be as um, wet as the round brush was. This does not hold as much. Okay. And sometimes you have to sacrifice parts of a painting, even if you really like what's going on in that part of the painting. If it is not your center of interest, um, and maybe it's di distracting from the center of interest, there's so much going on in the background of this painting that I felt like darkening it might be a good way to keep the focus on the flower and still have some of that color and maybe light glowing areas in the background. Because some of these lighter areas will still feel lighter because it's going to be going over both the dark and the light. All right, um, <clears throat> it is really pooling 
The water is down here at the bottom, so I'll just kind of soak that up to make sure I don't have color running everywhere. And then as I come this way, I'm actually going to start the water up here just so that it's damp. But I will have to, I probably will have to do this in a couple passes. We'll see. All right, so I've got the water up there and I want to make sure that this is wet still and then also right here. So it can take a few minutes for the water to sort of feel like it's staying wet enough. So sometimes you do have to go back over areas. Okay, so this is still damp enough up there and I'm going to start with my smaller brush because I can get into this area a little better and now I will start to see where I've gone over edges and things and like I said if I decide some part of the background I don't want to put some color over I can just use the water to like maybe keep a little bit of a green area or some part of the background right now I'm just interested in going dark so and this is really wet right here so I'm going to pause and just pull a little bit of that up maybe I'll keep a touch of pink and I need to switch brushes because I was running out of pigment to draw from and this is loaded with it so this upper edge I want to go darker and make a lot more dramatic now this corner is really dry so getting that in as quickly as I can And I will probably have to come back with the small brush right quick. You do have to be careful if you're rotating your painting around though, because if it is still really wet or it's starting to dry in some portion, um, if you rotate, turn your painting, it could cause the wetter area to cause a bloom in the area that's drying so you have to be careful of that and I might actually tip my board the other direction right now it's tipped back here on about a two inch riser so I can take the board off if I need to Okay, so some of this lighter area right in here, I really like. And so I think I'm going to try to keep that to add to that feeling of glow and light that's back there. I may decide later that I don't want some of that in there. But for right now, Whoops. So you have to get up on the tip of your brush. Hopefully you've got a brush with a real nice tip like these do. These are the silver black velvet brushes. All right. So got a lot of water down here. Um, as I assess this, so I've kind of come to where I thought I might. This is starting to dry over here. It's lost some of the shine. This is still wet here. So if I am going to try to continue this direction, I want to make sure that this is facing down. Um, but I kind of want to turn my painting the other direction. So I think what I will do is 
change where my board, my riser, is and let that remain facing down so that it won't push back and possibly cause a bloom right there. And this is damp here, but it's not really wet. I'm already liking the more dramatic background. I will definitely have to make some more pigment and this brush is really dirty. So I'm going to, not dirty, but it's got color in it. See if I can wet this. So I want to try to wet in here and not have it be too wet so that it pushes back. And this would be a time that you could stop, as I said, and just let it completely dry. So you would um, set it down, let it dry, and then you could re-wet. So maybe you would put a little water up in here and then just work down on this section. All right. Coming this way. Let's see if I can get some water over in here. And when you add water to your paper and then lay color over the top of that, you are actually lightening the mix or the color that you're putting down because you've got water on the paper. It um, is not going to lighten it a ton, but it will be a little lighter than what you're putting on. So if you're trying to make something really dramatically dark, um, you can use water first but you just may have to know that your paper needs to be, or you, you need to have your pigment, sorry, uh, a little darker in your mix. And sometimes I will actually, if I'm trying to get something really dark, lay my paper flat so that the color stays where I'm placing it. Okay, so then I want to go over and I'm going to pull out, even though I've got some Ultramarine Deep sitting on my palette, I'm going to get out more to make sure I have enough to get around this. And some parts of this were really wet Whoops! when I was putting it on. So this gives me a little bit of time to let some of that start to dry a little bit. And I probably need a little more indigo out as well. And normally I would not paint upward. Actually, this is better. It's not quite done yet. I might try taking this off of my board for now. Ooh, sorry about that. Okay, so with it off my board, it doesn't have the gravity to help it move. It still can move um, depending on how wet an area is or how dry parts of the uh, painting are. And as I come around here, this is the little fiddly area. This is going to be a lot more dramatic though. And I think that will make the flower really um, pop. And then I'm going to go in, I can ignore that part right now. Any place that is touching, oops, I thought that one was touching. Well, it is now. There we go. Um, any place it's touching the paint that is on the exterior. I want to make sure I get that in first. And this brush is actually really full of pigment, so that's going to be a lot darker right there. I will go ahead and use it in here because I want to make sure it matches value-wise. Oops, a little thin there. 
Now, if it goes, I probably should be using a lot smaller brush right in here, but I don't have the time because all of this is starting to dry. Um, if it goes over the yellow, I will try to pull and clean those lines a little bit, but it just may, they may be just slightly more muted. I may not get them back to the bright yellow that they were. Okay. All right, and then I will go back, pull that out just a touch. This is really starting to dry down here. So I'm going to use my flat brush and try to quickly get some water going down here. Whoops, probably off the camera angle there a little bit. And as long as I can kind of fill in some of these bigger areas, I can use the paint to come up next to those objects to make them nice and clean. So I'm not necessarily trying to get right up to the edges with this brush. Okay, so that's better. I did have nice clean edges on this painting because I had tape around it. I kind of like some of that pink down here, so I will leave some of that. And like I said, I have not completed the uh, flower. I will need to go back and finish up some of that some of the indigo and unfortunately well maybe I have I can use a, a screenshot of the painting prior to whoops So I will uh, take an image or show an image of the painting prior to starting this and then I'll do a side by side at the end so you can see the difference. So then the last area is right here and down this section right here. And uh, because this is a smaller section, I will just use my small brush and go ahead and rotate this so that darker value back there is really going to make oh and i've got a little piece right there too the uh, flower and the light on the flower feel more dramatic Now, because this is a smaller space, I don't necessarily have to put water in here. I could probably get around the space quickly enough that it doesn't need to be there. But because I've used water everywhere else and I don't want to maybe change the look and all of a sudden possibly have this area be darker than what I did everywhere else, um, I'm going to go ahead and use that water. Whoops, don't do that. Okay. All 
All right, so I've got the majority of the background in, and then because these guys are really small, um, I'm just going to, and I'm having to reach across. So I've got my wrist propped on the right side, and because I don't want to touch into the wet paint with my hand, Okay, got that one, and then I'll rotate it, and I will uh, let this dry, and you won't see that. I will just come back when it's completely dry, and I will show you what it looks like. So I hope that was helpful to see, and I'll be back in just a little bit. The painting is now dry and I can um, give you a split screen in just a second. I will show you the before and the after and I'm really liking it. I like how dramatic the light is on the Columbine and as you can see from my original photo that um, it does really make the Columbine glow to have the background be darker. So I will show you that and I hope it was interesting to see the process of basically changing the look of your painting and adjusting it so that the values are stronger and maybe pushing back some of what was going on in the background so that the focus is more on my main subject. So uh, stay tuned for the split screen of the uh, two images, the before and after, and then I'll show uh, my uh, demo painting number one compared to this one at the very end. And if you have a tip trick or technique that you might like to see in watercolor, please leave a comment below and I will try to get to that uh, when I can. Thanks. Have a good week. Bye.